Hey everybody, it's your girl Angie. Welcome back to Kiss My Cheeks TV. Today, let's talk about green leaf. This is the third day. <laughs> it's the episode number three. I like how they're calling it day one, day two, day three. I like that. <sighs> I'm gonna say something mean. I'm sorry. Green leaf is starting to go downhill. The writing is starting to take a turn for the about to go stupid because I said <laughs> I said the third day must be the day of dummies like so much of this episode pissed me off there was not a lot of ooh like what's going on it was a lot of oh uh, we really gonna take the storyline there I don't this this is what happens to a lot of good shows when the writing is so good in the beginning and then you can tell when the writers are having writer's block and it's kind of like, okay, this need like it happened to scandal. It happened to how to get away with murder. Like a lot of the good shows around season for, for Greenleaf lasted a little bit longer. Cause like scandal, it happened around season three or four, but anyway, at least this is season five, but the writing is starting to go left. The storyline is starting to become stupid to me. There are still a few good storylines left that I'm going to talk about, but we're going to talk about Greenleaf really quick. I have a few notes. I'm going to skip over a lot of the fluffy parts. So the show opens with Darius. He's off with Grace's lead. You know, Grace, who was that? Cliff, one of the old pastors gave Grace a hint for some of Bob's old businesses she told it to Darius he's off to Vegas to go see what's up now number one I said Grace and Darius need to get back together because I like Grace and Darius together but I feel like they drumming up this whole you and Noah need to be a family for AJ thing and so I feel like Grace is going to block Darius when he wants to try to shoot his shot to get back with her um he was also fired from his job. Like, so I guess he's just going to make this a freelance story. But anyway, they told him, we want you to follow politics. He was like, Bob is running for politics. They was like, do this story or you can go. And he said, I guess I'll go. He must got some change somewhere because he, he left his job. Okay. Now we see Bishop and Lady May looking up church names on Google. Okay. They get into an argument about Bishop needing a physical, which I think Lady May really wants him to get a mental <laughs> physical to see, like, is he in the beginning stages of dementia? Because he's forgetting everything. Like, it, they came across a church name, and Lady May was like, Bishop, we already been in that church. You, you was just there with the corn maze. And, and I ain't mad at Bishop. He talking about we did this with Charity when she was a little kid. It's some stuff I don't remember from 20, 30 years ago either. So I'm, <laughs> I ain't mad at Bishop for that one. Um, So in comes Charity. And you know, whenever Charity hits the screen, I start rolling my eyes like... What's she about to come down here and complain about today? And so she already telling them off top, I don't know what y'all want to talk to me for. I'm not singing at y'all new church. And I'm like, bitch, ain't nobody even asked you to sing at the new church. So, but <laughs> anyway, Bishop started talking about you could be associate pastor. And I'm like, really? You want her to come over to the new church and do what she did with the last church? Like, we just giving out second chances like that. Anyway, she said, no, I'm already associate pastor. Well, I want to be associate pastor at y'all little hole in the wall church when I'm the associate pastor at H&H. &H. She ain't say that, but that's how she said it. Anyway, I like Lady May because Lady May took this opportunity to read Charity some more. And you already know I love when Lady May reads Char Charity. She said, go ahead and be associate pastor over there at your tailor-made torture device. I was like, yes, you are torturing yourself being at this church, looking at this man with his new wife who don't want you no more. <laughs> and then what they said, she said, they're going to have you sitting over there 
with a wheat looking kids. I think that was her way of saying mixed children. Like they mad, they mammy. And I'm like, no, they ain't Lady May because Charity don't even watch her own kids. So she damn sure ain't about to watch theirs. So anyway, and so now Charity is like, mama, don't you think I have a plan? Don't you think I'm going to take this on and prevail? I'm going to be a great pastor. And her mom was like, you asking me if this ever occurred to me that you're going to prevail? No. And I just started laughing because Lady May reads her kids down in the nicest, nastiest way. It is so hilarious. But Charity gets upset. And she's like, I'm going to work. Bye. Go to work. Okay, so a little bit out of order because I'm trying to group everything together. We get over here with Zora, Sophia, and Nikki. <sighs> They going on the computer. Zora's like, all your titty pics are gone. Like, I don't see them on Snapchat, Instagram. So, who did he just release it to his friends? Like, that's not reality. If one of your, you is this huge pastor's daughter. And your naked picture is leaked on the internet and you telling me like that is gone it's not a scandal they here in like you in memphis and that ain't that big of a city but you know here in memphis you telling me ain't nobody talking about it locally at least <laughs> to me that that's stupid writing you telling me what did nikki do just text the picture to zora <laughs> That's not how social media works. That's the, maybe in a day or two, but I know for sure in Memphis, that picture would have went viral because this is a green leaf. Anyway, so Sophia starts throwing Nikki clothes in the trash and walks Nikki at the perfect moment and they get to arguing talking about oh you the one who released my picture i know you did it and she was like bitch so what and she was like oh your breath and she was like yeah i made sure to put something in my mouth so you would know you would never taste it again and i was like really nikki <laughs> it was funny the way nikki said it because i was like "Ooh, she got you um <laughs> sophia like sophia was a stupid one anyway to lose your man. How you gonna go tell this man to go make up with his ex-girlfriend so you could be more comfortable and she can get out your grandmama house? That's your grandma of the house. Y'all could have been put Nikki out. All you had to do was go tell Lady May one good time. And Lady May would have been put Nikki out. I don't understand. I don't understand it. So Nikki hits um What's her name? Sophia with, well, at least I could have babies. And that, and Sophia snapped. She went to go try. She ain't whoop Nikki ass, but she tried to whoop Nikki ass and they start fighting. I said off top, Zora, you wrong. That's your cousin. She done said this slick, foul stuff to your cousin and you just sitting back looking like, no, y'all both should have been whooping Nikki ass. But anyway, at least Zora did break it up. And Zora was like, Nikki, you got to go. And Nikki was like, Sophia showed you her ass 82 times. And I was like, when? Like, when has Sophia done Zora wrong? Get in the comments, let me know, because I don't recall. I've always recalled Sophia having Zora's back. Now, true enough, Sophia went through a little... When she found out, you know, she had that accident. She found out she couldn't have kids and she did kind of get nasty towards everybody. But she's always had Zora's back. And what, did she go off to college? But hell, Zora went off with her man. So, um, I forget that. Zora should have never, ever had Nikki's side over Sophia's, period, at any point of time. But at the end of the day, Zora was like, Sophia, I swear I ain't tell her about the babies. And I'm like, well, who told her? My memory might be bad. Maybe she told Dante and Dante told Nikki, which that is even more fucked up. <laughs> that is even more fucked up. 
that's <laughs> that's even more fucked up for you to lose your virginity to this man and then he goes off and tell his ex-girlfriend your biggest secret your biggest insecurity i'm still side eyeing zora i don't think dante would do that because how would that come up in conversation like, yeah, we back together, but you know Sophia couldn't have no kids. Like, I don't, I, I'm still side eyeing Zora on that one. But anyway, now we get a scene where Bishop, Lady May, Noah, and Grace are all sitting around talking about AJ or whatever. And they all toasting dark liquor at noon. And I'm like, what are y'all toasting for? It's talking about Grace, you ain't gonna have a toast with us. And I'm like, what are y'all toasting dark liquor to it? The, pa the pastors. But anyway, that whole scene irritated me. They want Noah and Grace to be a family. Blah, blah, AJ this. Blah, blah, AJ that. Lady May did give... <laughs> did read Grace for old times sake. Lady May was like, one of y'all gave him up. And one of y'all didn't know he exist existed. So... Who you think he want to be cool with? I'm like, yes, Lady May. Read Grace one good time, a good season one. Read on Grace. I miss that. <laughs> I miss that. Anyway, now we get this preview, you know, last week where Phil is telling Charity, we want the your voice to be the first voice the people hear of the... um. I guess in the little lunch room they're gonna have church next week. I don't know. And so Grace is like, I mean, Charity's like, y'all want me to preach? And he was like, nah, girl, we just want you to do the welcome. <laughs> I told you in video number one, Charity, associate pastors don't preach. All they do is introduce the pastor and the welcome. Don't nobody want to hear the associate pastor preach. We come to church to hear our pastor pe preach. So you can go ahead and take your mini series over to the Sunday school, over to the Bible study, but that's about it. Or go on over there and, and get your own church. I don't understand what happened to the day. You see what your mom and daddy doing. If you were called to preach, the people will come to you. You ain't got to go do all this dirty stuff to talk in front of all these people. The people will come to you if you call to preach. But anyway, I don't want to talk about charity. And then he said, this is our last day in this building. I don't understand how this is the last day in the building when in episode one, they were cleaning out the church. In episode two, they painting and redecorating offices. They got new pictures of Bob up, and they took all the bishop pictures out. I don't understand how y'all getting ready. I guess y'all say, if we going to wreck the church, just leave everything in it and, and bulldoze it with everything in it. We ain't packing up no boxes. We buying all new stuff. That that's must be what y'all going to do. I don't, that's just a slip of the writing. Moving on, let's get over to the fool of the episode. To me, it's Jacob. What is Jacob doing? I don't understand. I mean, okay, Tasha told you Basie was dead. Why are you trying to play detective? You are. You don't have any experience in solving murders. But you want to go to the people who want to accuse your father of murdering their husband. You want to go show them all your evidence. <laughs> like, I think my daddy did murder your daddy. Um... Here go the wheel. You know, you sure it was my daddy who called your daddy over to the church? You sure it wasn't Matt? Like, why are you stirring up sleeping dogs? Them people, they probably still hate the Greenleys, but they weren't thinking about Bishop at that time. You over here, you over here stirring up mess. I don't, I don't get it. Like, I would have saw that original will. Yo, brother, Grace's brother, whatever y'all call Aaron, I already told you the smoking gun is the original will. I want to know what the original will say. That's going to let you know how much juice this second will has. You see the original will. You see it was Basie's daddy who was supposed to get the house. And, and you want to go take Basie to evidence. 
I think you think my daddy did kill your daddy. Look at this wheel. Maybe he did. Do like, I don't understand why you wouldn't. <laughs> I don't understand why last season you didn't go to Lady May and Bishop with what charity, with what Clarissa was doing. Because you already not the smartest green leaf. And I would have saw that original wheel. If I wanted to protect my parents, I would have tore that up, burnt it, and threw the ashes in the water. Bam, ain't no original wheel. Well, what you gonna do, Clarissa? Ain't no original wheel. So I, I just don't understand what Jacob is doing. I definitely don't understand why he wanna go visit Rochelle and Basie's sister. And you saw at the whole end of the conversation, he just spilling all the tea. She on the phone calling somebody. It's probably Basie and or Rochelle talking about um, Jacob just left here. It's on. <laughs> Y'all come back to town. It's on. Green, yep. Bishop did it. Jacob just left. Part two. We gonna see what's gonna happen with that soon. I, I am interested in that storyline because now I get to read Jacob for being a dummy. Um, so now we see Charity Phil and Judy. I said they all deserve each other. <laughs> They all are miserable, and what they say, misery loves company. They all deserve each other. Judy is in Charity Face, flashing the ring. And I'm like, bitch, you, you both look stupid. Charity, you look stupid for even being there, so that's on you. Judy, you look stupid. Just a week ago, Charity had this ring. It wasn't even a week ago. What was that, day one? So that was two days ago. Charity had the ring on her finger, and now you got it on your finger. You look like a dummy. He couldn't even buy you a new ring? He gonna give you the same ring he gave another woman? Okay. And now Charity is calling herself Godzilla. I'm Godzilla, and I'm gonna out-preach and out-teach both of y'all. And I'm like, girl, so self-righteous, Charity. So self-righteous. How dare you betray your whole family Put all that dirt on your family and then turn around and want to be self-righteous talking about you this great preacher. No, ma'am, God don't God don't like ugly and you ugly, Charity. What you did to your family was ugly. And what they say, God don't bless no mess. You can't be in the midst of all that mess and think God getting ready to bless you. I don't, you can't, you can't get your feelings hurt and then people want to throw God out there. Well, God don't do this. No, no, he ain't. Uh-uh. You don't get to do dirt. And then talk about how good you about to be a blessing to other people. I don't <laughs> Anyway, let's move on for charity. I can't stand charity. And I can't stand how self-righteous she is. Like, she can do all the dirt and talk all the shit she want to talk. But her God is going to make her prevail. She just going to be this great pastor. I don't see it. But I'm sure the writer's going to make it happen. It's going to piss me off. And so now... Charity walking across the church and Phil want to know if he could be friends. <laughs> really? Like they all deserve each other because Phil is over here miserable. He loved Charity, but he want to be a pastor so bad he going to marry this white woman. Where does that? Where is that in the Bible? Where does it say you got to marry anybody you don't want to marry to be a pastor? It don't say that nowhere in the Bible. So... <laughs> And now you over here eating her seasonless food. All that food looked like it ain't have an ounce of seasoning salt on it. It was just all beige. All beige food. You got to sit over here and eat your seasonless food. And you got to be miserable with Judy. And Judy, I don't know how happy you are. Yeah, you got a man, but you only got the man because your daddy paid for him. Moving on. None of this is godly. None of those three are holy and y'all want to go to their church okay um jacob finally pulls clarissa card and was like i want um joint custody of winky and she was like i guess you want your daddy to go to jail and he was like if he if he belong in jail he belong there hell if he did it he did it when we about to see you should have said that last season anyway Jacob goes to confront Bishop. I thought it was entirely pointless because it just wouldn't be me. Like, I, it, it ain't nothing. Nobody could tell me about my daddy 
that's going to make me think he murdered somebody just because I know my father's character. I don't care what paperwork you pull out. I don't care whose siblings you come through in my face. I don't care. It's nothing anybody can tell me that would make me think my dad murdered somebody. And so... I don't have to go around playing detective. As soon as somebody said it, I'm telling them what's up. So-and-so talking um, shit about you. So-and-so said you did X, Y, Z. What we going to do to take care of this? You know, so I don't understand the whole point of, Daddy, I'm going to ask you this question, and I need you to tell me the truth. Who are you? Who are you? So he can tell you the truth, and then you can go tell the truth on the witness stand. Bye. Anyway... It looks like it's going to get better. I think Jacob is finally going to tell Bishop the truth next week. So we got to wait to see that. So Letty Mae is now coming up to talk to Charity. And Charity is playing with Nathan. And I was on Twitter and someone... <laughs> somebody said, what is Charity doing with Marisol's son? <laughs> That was the best tweet of the night. I love that. They was like, why is Charity playing with Marisol's son? Yes, Charity ain't never with that baby. But anyway, Lady May found a hymn book where Charity wrote down Reverend Charity Greenleaf. And Lady May wants Charity to be a pastor. And I'm like, Lady May, you was just reading Charity a few hours ago. And, and now y'all friends. I said, Lady May, do you have dementia? Did you forget you hate Charity? Because I ain't forgot that we hate Charity. Like, I don't, understand, I don't understand why she's still in y'all house. It's only day three. Charity would have been kicked out. The same way you you getting ready to kick Clarissa out next week, Charity would have been kicked out that night. Her and her sad face with her crack face and her um crack proposal. That same night, Charity would have been out of my house. But now y'all friends. I don't want to see it. Like the last thing I said on my notes, I did say I like the name of the church Charity came up with, Eternal Faith Fellowship. That's a good name. But <clears throat> Charity can't have no happy ending <laughs> to this story. Like if this ends with Charity being this great pastor over this great church and Charity does prevail, like what are we teaching people? We teaching people we could double cross our family, shit on everything. Everybody who ever had our back and we still gonna get the prize. No, Charity still needs to be dragged and embarrassed and laughed at some more. Anyway, let's get to AJ because I'm over it. I told y'all review number one. I thought AJ was gonna be dead. It was gonna be um, a fake AJ. Bam, we done. Let's move on. But no, we want AJ to have... An extended storyline. And I said, number one, the actor who plays AJ, his acting is not up to par for him to be on this show every week, giving us these sad looks of... Like, no. No, 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 no. His acting is so one note where everyone else on the show is so phenomenal. I just want him off of my screen. And I'm going to say something mean, so I'm going to move on. It's the writer's fault, too, because I feel like the whole writing of this storyline is stupid. Because, okay, I'm assuming this must be the real AJ. And so you telling me, who was the man in the graveyard? We never going to address that, like... Darius is never going to... He was quick to find out what Bob was doing. He can't find out this dead person's name. So we can at least put a bow on it. I need for this... For AJ's storyline to ever be like, ah, oh, for me, this has to be a fake AJ. <laughs> because why did... Why you want to kill yourself? Why did... Whoever this person is, you know them. Either it's the real AJ or you know him from jail. Maybe he was someone who, one of the men who raped you in jail. I don't know. I just got to know more to it. Like, we just never going to address that. I know it's only episode three, but, okay, so AJ, he, he don't want to talk to nobody but Sophia. Why? But anyway, 
Anyway, so finally he he tells Sophia, I want to talk to Grace. I was raped in jail and I got HIV. That's not an aha moment because we already kind of guessed HIV last week because the doctor was like, oh, you sure you ain't touched the blade that he cut himself with? Like, any doctor that says that to anybody, that's a red flag. What you mean I ain't touched the blade? What you trying to tell me? Like, we guessed that last week, so that wasn't a shocker. Okay, he was raped in jail. That was a shocker, but not really because we've all seen Oz and every other jail TV show. We know what go on in jail. We tell people that all the time. Don't drop the soap. So, like, damn. I, I'm just over the AJ storyline. And it needs to have some more shock and awe to it. It needs to spin and dip with something else because it's becoming very predictable. Um, he he, But he, he stole all the drugs. Those were all HIV medications. <sighs> I'm over it. Next week looks good. Because next week, Lady May puts Clarissa out. And I can't wait to see that. And so, we're going to talk some more. I talk too much for this to be such a mm, episode. But, you know, when you have a favorite show, you're going to stick with it, good or bad. I'm hoping the writing picks up. We still got to figure out what Bob is doing with this secret business. <clears throat> Hell, I'm at the point now where I think Bishop did do it. Maybe he did it and he forgot. <laughs> I'm mess. Get in the comments. Let me know what y'all thought about the episode. Um, like, comment, share, all that good stuff. And I will see y'all later. Bye.